Okay. As just like chronologically, like am I? Yes. Are we trying to do this in one take kind of thing, or we're gonna cut it all up? We're gonna cut it up. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna go just like bye bye bye. Okay. That works for you. Okay. okay. In early 2023, Rocky Mountain visited Eric's at our headquarters in Minneapolis. Then, later that spring, they invited us out to their R&D center in Vancouver to learn and shred. All right, almost off to Vancouver. Final flight of the day. Round two. <laughs> Indeed. All right, we made it. We're here. Gonna get settled in, hopefully make it to our hotel, no problem. Go from there. They're from Minnesota. Yeah, they're from a bike shop visiting from Minnesota. So we have a selection of bikes here in our office, a little micro museum, and uh, I'm gonna walk you through some of them. They're all historically relevant to us. Um, they either influenced the direction of our company or in some cases influenced the whole direction of the sport. So we're quite proud of our heritage and so we put it here on display. So there was a period in Rocky Mountain's history which went down in infamy where um, we created what was called the Fro Riders. Um, free riding was its infancy. Uh, we had developed this free ride team with Richie Schley, Wade Simmons, and Brett Tippy. Uh, whereupon we are slapped with a cease and desist letter from an unnamed bicycle company. You can Google it, it's famous on the internet, um, because they had trademarked the word free ride. So, no problem, we created the Fro Riders. So, the Fro Riders were busy riding around on these, which is a uh, generation of frames, the RM frames. So, we started with an RM7, a long travel seven inch bike, which then got pumped all the way up to the RM9, which we have here. Uh, as well as we shrunk it down to an RM6, which is more of a free ridey, trail-y sort of bike. But this really defined a generation for us, uh, thrust link suspension system. Um, this is really what put us on the map globally and got us a ton of attention. Let's talk a little bit about the actual drive system and where this... Um, and my favorite part about being a part of the Rocky Mountain team is just being surrounded by a whole lot of passionate people that share their love for mountain biking with me and our community. Love working here because I get to combine my passion for mountain bikes into um, you know, a meaningful job in the bike industry and, um, and uh, yeah, it's a ton of fun working here. Just get to play around with bikes. Trail building, riding the bikes here, designing the bikes and then testing them here. I was possibly responsible for the plus bike movement. Um, not really sure about that, but that was, we were pretty early in the game there. I've been riding a bike since I was a teenager on the Burnaby Mountain over here and some of the North Shore trails back in the early 90s. Moved out of the country, missed mountain biking, came back and started mountain biking again locally here on the North Shore and got a job in the industry. And you know our strong point here is that we were all riders within the, the entire company. Yeah, so this is a printed early sample of the model year 24 Instinct. It did make another iteration change on the shape of the down tube, so, but this one also has the storage. So this one's a little bit different than the Slayer. The Slayer doesn't allow for a water bottle to be mounted on the panel, whereas uh, this frame allows for a water bottle to be mounted on the panel. So it's a completely different system. Similar hole, different different system, closing system. Yeah. yeah. And this is the this is a mule. This was made in house. Yeah. Yeah. So here we have some adjustment. I think we had ride four there, and then some adjustment back here. Yeah. I saw there's like quite a few different. Yeah. Shapes and and, like, and over there. For the I guess yeah for the mule. Yeah. Because sometimes we're not sure 
the exact geometry to choose. So we allow for different, different mounting points just to be able to try them out. So here's some links fresh out of the, fresh in today for that instinct. Nice. First metal samples, as you can see. So this is the carbon version. Do you want me to put it on the table? Uh, it's interesting though, you build in the, the welding marks here, or, or like the, the beads, I guess. Yeah, it's, part of that is for the graphics team to see if there's any issues. And also we need certain distances between the top layer and the, or this, the bottom of the head tube to the bottom of the down tube mm. uh, to allow for enough uh, welding. That makes sense. So then we, we basically check these parts with our, with our um, uh, manufacturing partners as well to make sure that it's all kind of within manufacturing specs. And then you can see here we have uh, the breech adjust little piece on the carbon, whereas on the alloy one, we have an oversized head tube. So they're, they do the same thing, but they're two different systems. Yeah. yeah. And we're all hypercritical of our own work and yeah. what's, what's out there, because you know, these are also our toys too. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really well testing right away for yeah. everybody. Like, out the door. Yeah, and that's the handiest thing. I think we're able to, you know, make a mule, make an adjustment. Sometimes it's just we make a new rear end for an existing bike to prove a point. And as soon as it's out the oven and aligned, we can mount parts and a few hours later already have a number of laps, like the trails that we rode yesterday, right? Awesome. And we get feedback right away. Yeah. yeah. And if I need to get some sideways loading on the landing, I give give Thomas a call and say, let's go for, for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if we want a twinkle toe or a lot of different different features, steep things, we have you know, Ken's doing all that work, so. We have partners in Asia and they complete a lot of the frame testing at their end. And then we have machines in house uh, to verify their test results. So we complete a bunch of cycle fatigue testing, both in horizontal, vertical, and pedal testing, and some destructive testing to see the strength of the frames themselves. We, we want the frames to fa fail in a, at a certain point, and this is, we're able to check that in-house. And then we have a whole library of, of you know, test frames that we've broken in the past, and we can compare them to the results that we've had to see where we're at today. So that's a quick tour of some of the uh, museum pieces we have in our office here. There's uh, several more squirreled away in boxes, as well as some advanced R&D projects that, much like the X-Files, are s archived away and will never see the light of day, and I'm not going to show them to you today. Um, but lots of cool stuff, and we're going to keep populating the halls with new stuff as we go. A huge shout out to Ken, Lyle, Alex, Ashley, and all the other fantastic people at Rocky Mountain. They really showed us amazing hospitality, showing us behind the scenes, and sharing their love for the ride. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this one, let us know down below in the comments. Have a great day.